today on Direction for Life. The word from the Lord is to cease fire. You're getting distracted. You're shooting at the wrong people. You're wasting your energy and face fighting the wrong enemy. You need to fight the devil. It may be coming through a person, but look at the spirit behind the person. And I, I challenge you to shoot. If you shoot, you'll hit that dog devil and you will cause him to back up and retreat. Today's message is Standing Fast in Faith by Dr. Marsha Bailey. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 16, chapter the ninth verse. I'm going to be talking to you about standing fast in your faith. Just going to give you a couple of scriptures here. Standing fast in your faith. I believe we're in a season of great trial and adversity and and all of a sudden, things that used to make sense don't make sense to you anymore. You're almost, your theology is being questioned. You're wondering, what did you do wrong? What you should have done? What is going on? I know the word says this, but I'm not seeing the manifestations. Making you question certain things. And the word from the Lord in this season is to stand fast in your faith. Do not quit. Do not give up. Don't get overwhelmed by your circumstances or situation. I believe it is not a coincidence that pastor spent several weeks on talking about a favor upgrade. I think it's something kind of interesting to some of us who, in a, is, who are in a worse place than they ever expected in their life. And hello, out of left field, you hear words say a favor upgrade. Then my son followed up talking about breathing on it, that we need God to breathe on it. Because I believe we're in a set time, in a set place that God wants to do certain things in our lives. Even though the circumstances look so contrary, look contrary to a breakthrough, look contrary to your deliverance, look contrary to your increase, look contrary to a turnaround, which is why the word is coming to you today to stand fast, to stand fast. First Corinthians, the 16th chapter, the ninth verse, they say, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. Somebody say the door is open unto me. Say a great door is open to me. Say a great door is open to me. He says, and there are many adversaries. There are spirits and individuals who don't want me to go through the door. But the word of the Lord says there's a great door. I love what the Amplified said. It's a wide door. A wide door. So the devil cannot block this wide door. Whatever he puts in your path, God says there's enough room to still go through the door. That's a word for someone. So don't get distracted by the, the news you may have gotten or the word you may have gotten or the answer you may have gotten. God says there's still room for you to go through the door. Glory to God. Nothing can block what God wants to do in your life. God is not man that he should lie. Praise God. He don't change his mind about what he told you. If he's going to do it, then he's going to do it. So no matter what the enemy release in your life, whatever arrow he shoots at you, this is a wide door. Glory to God. You have enough space, enough room to still walk through the door. Praise God. 13 verse says, watch ye. Be sober. Look. Be alert. Be on your guard. Stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Quit. You like men, be strong. Basically, he's saying, mature up. Stop acting like a child. Stop going around acting like you don't know what to do. It's too much for you. He's basically saying to us, man up, woman up, get yourself together. Listen, he understands what you've been through. He understands what you are feeling. But he says, I need you to muster up your strength. He says, be strong. The What I love with the Amplified says, be courageous and grow in strength. Amen. Look at the person's sitting next to you and say, I need you to be courageous. I need you to grow in strength. I need you to get yourself together. I can't do this without you. I may need some help to walk through this open door. 
Yeah, that's what season it is. Sometimes you may need a little help on your, in your process. You need a little help to walk through this door. When you take enough hits and when you take some punches that you didn't expect to come at you, it may have blindsided you. You may got some things in your eye. You may be like a fighter. Your eyes are swollen. You may not be able to breathe. They might have to cut your nose open so you can get some air, but you still got breath in your lungs. See, the thing is, God never said you'll walk through the door pretty. All he promised that you'll go through the door. So I want to challenge you not to be all distracted by how ugly you look as you make your way through the door. See, I ran track back in the day and I had to run the quarter. And in running the quarter, you never came across that finish line pretty. Everything in your body will lock up. Everything in your body will go through lockdown. And you try to get the monkey off of your back, but you see the finish line. And you must cross because you were trained. You do not quit when you feel pain. You do not quit when you feel like your lungs are about to burst. You do not quit when your legs feel like rubber. You do not quit when you think everybody's passing. You do not quit when you feel like your head is about to explode. My coach told me, Marsha, I don't care how bad you hurt, you better not quit. So many times I came across that finish line looking ugly, looking like I don't know how to run. Never had a, a coaching lesson in my life, but my goal was to cross the finish line. My goal was to let the clock clock me in under a particular time, no matter what it felt like. So I want to encourage you. You got to keep on moving. You got to keep on running. See, the thing about this thing is some of us don't have the liberty to quit. Some of us are too much in this thing to back up. I can't fake a hamstring uh, pull. I can't fake being hurt. I got to keep running even though it look like I'm the last one on the track. I've been through that too. Coach, I don't care you dead last. You keep on running. You cross. You cross. I don't care how many people has passed you. I don't know who I'm preaching to. You may feel like all your friends, all your sisters, all your brother has reached their destination before you. You may feel like you're the last one that you're on the short bus. You're trying to figure out why I'm still trying to make it, why I'm still in the process, why I'm not the one out there. I'm just as qualified. I'm just as skilled. I'm just as talented. But your process is different. Your process is making you into a champion. See, some of us got to go through a little bit more training. Some of us got to dig deeper in what your body has been already been given to you. My coach had to sculpt me. He had to dig it out of me. He had to sculpt me and make me into a quarter miler. So so what am I saying? He's making you into an entrepreneur. He's making you into a businessman, a businesswoman. He's making you into that world-class athlete, that world-class singer. He's making you. Somebody say, Lord, make me. Say, Lord, make me. But you got to stand fast, okay? You got to hold on on. You can't quit. You can't allow this thing to overwhelm you. So let me give you the definition of standing fast. Standing fast means to persevere, to stand erect. That's what he basically said. Act like men. Get yourself together. I know there's a couple of military people in here. They would never want to go into a battle with an officer, a soldier just slumped over, walking like that. They would be so offended. They're like, get yourself together. I watched some movies of, of uh, old time with Civil War and then they how they used to line up walking into fire, walking straight and erect into fire. They didn't fight like we fight, we hiding. They know the cannons are straight ahead. They know the horses and the swords are straight ahead. And what are they doing? March, 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 scared. But on the, on the outside, you can't tell they scared. Their shoulders are straight. Their head is back. Understanding that they may be taking their last breath, but they understand, I must hold my stance. I must stand erect, and I must be able to take a hit. Nudge the person next to you. Say, are you able to take a hit? Are you able to take a hit? Guess what? I am signing up individuals who are able to take a hit. I need people on my team who can take a hit. I need people on that, my team who can uh, fight while crying, fight while in pain, play while hurt. I don't know what you know what I'm talking about, but I, plenty of times I've been on the track hurt. I've been on the court hurt, back get, giving out, laying down between breaks, getting back on the floor. Why? Because he got to play hurt. I watched my son get hurt, break his hand, get in the game, could not keep him off the court, left the hospital, went to the game, got, had played one of his best games in his college career, 
hurt. What I'm telling you, if you just hold your stance, if you just focused, if you just get yourself together, you have the best season of your life. You will be so proud of what God is doing on the inside of you. God will pull out of you stuff you hadn't realized you didn't have the capacity or the ability to execute and perform. So I prophesy to some of you who are hurt, prophesy to some who are broken, prophesy to somebody who's disappointed, broken hearted. If you keep yourself together if you stand erect if you're not ashamed to cry while you're in pain no can't don't care what people may say about you but you hold your position take the hit this will be your best season ever this will be a season of productivity this will be a season of increase this will be a season that you get delivered of stuff you just gave up on that you would change into that person that God has called you to be years ago praise God that is for somebody here this morning and also standing fast is also a military turn, basically that a high ranking officer would give and tell you to cease fire, to stop shooting because he has to give you direction. He has to give you instruction. So the instruction for today is the Lord says to resist the frustration that has caused you to lash out on one another who are closer to you. Sometimes when you're in pain, you lash out on the person who's the closest to you. Cease fire. She and he is not the enemy. Your co-worker is not the enemy. He told me to tell you to cease fire. Stop hostility in your marriage. Stop hostility with your children. Stop hostility with your co-worker. Stop hostility with your brother and sister in Christ. Let the person go. Forgive them. Let it go. Take the anger and the frustration and turn it on the devil. Now, don't get mad at me this morning. Nobody said nothing to me this morning, but the word from the Lord is to cease fire. You're getting distracted. You're shooting at the wrong people. You're wasting your energy and face fighting the wrong enemy. You need to fight the devil. It may be coming through a person, but look at the spirit behind the person. And I, I challenge you to shoot. If you shoot, you'll hit the that dog devil and you will cause him to back up and retreat but as long as you're fighting with your spouse as long as you're fighting with your children as long as you're fighting with your co-worker as long as you're fighting with individuals it's not the individual it's the spirit the reason why I know it because I'm fighting things I've been fighting all my life it's just showing up with different people so I know it's not my husband I know it's not my sister I know it's not my brother I know it's not the individual it's the spirit that's trying to keep me me bound. It's the spirit is trying to draw a fence around me. It's a spirit that's trying to keep me on lockdown. It's a spirit that's trying to get me to go back on what God has told me, what God has promised me, what God has shown me, what God has spoke to me. He wants me to walk away from the table. And this morning, I need somebody to join me and say, I ain't walking away from the table. I'm not walking away from the table empty-handed. I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I'm going to leave the table with everything that God has promise me that your fight hurt you fight in pain and it's okay been there done that praise God I've been on a team of individuals they knew I was hurt but when I when the gun went off they said okay Marshall we need you to run we need you to run when I was on a relay team I need you to run basically they said do not let the pain distract you or immobilize you or cause you to underperform this is a season that God said I don't want you to underperform anymore I want you to hit the mark I want you to be spot on I want you to allow this pain and this discomfort and this frustration and this irritation to birth a, a giant on the inside of you to birth a person of excellence on the inside of you to birth a professional on the inside of you to birth an expert on the inside of you after I come out of what I've been through I'm telling you I'm gonna be an expert on some things I'm gonna be a professional on some things I'm gonna be able to see some stuff I could not see before I'm gonna be able to see the devil from afar off this time around if I hold my stance if I stand in fast in faith and the reason why I mentioned earlier because there's a great wide door there's an effectual door there's a wide open door. While I lay in bed this morning, God said, the door is open. It's open. And not just this morning. He really kind of spoke the word initially to me last Sunday as I got up some, that morning, early that morning, spent time in prayer. I was sitting at the counter. And God says, Marsha, I have an open door here. 
but I know you've been through some stuff, so much stuff that makes you want to say, I had enough. I'm good. I'm good. I, God, you blessed me. I, I, I achieved this. I'm good. Because being out here can hurt. I'm out in the middle of this thing. I can't see my way ahead of me, and I can't see my way behind me. I'm way, I'm far out here. So I was like, ah, oh, oh. God said, you can't go back. You can't go back. You can't retreat. I know you feel like you don't have any strength to keep walking, but I got you. I never told you you got to do this thing by yourself. I'm holding you up. I've sent angels, ministering spirits sent to the heirs of salvation, which who you are, Marcia. They will hold you up when you feel like you're going down for the count. He said, I got angels charged to be at your side, to hold you when you feel like your legs can't lock. They got you if you say, I'm going to go through the door. And I, I said, I'm going to go for the opportunity. I said, when the op opportunity comes, God, I'm going to go for it. See, the thing is here, because there's an opportunity, and the, even though the opportunity is not there yet, you realize how many hits you took without the opportunity. You realize this, this, that you've been through a, a lot of warfare and you took a lot of punches and, and, say, and, and shot you with many arrows just by walking by faith. So you know that opportunity is going to call for the big boys. You know the opportunity, Satan is going to send his goons. So what Satan is trying to do is to intimidate many of us to forfeit the open door. He wants you to be too fatigued, too intimidated, too scared, too exhausted, too exasperated to go for the open door. And I sat at the table and it's like, I'm going for the open door. And then my son got up and said, he said, God is getting ready to present us with a God opportunity, a God opportunity. I said, God, you spoke that thing to me this morning. So I understand that this is a set time. I believe there's a set time for a wide open door. But Satan wants you to be overwhelmed with the work. He wants you to be exhausted. He said, God, this has been too hard. So, but this opportunity, this great door, it means, it means it's a massive door of opportunity, uniquely designed, y'all, uniquely designed for your capacity. It's uniquely designed for your skill. It's uniquely designed for your gifts. It's uniquely designed for your talents. See, I understand being places where I feel like I was above my pay grade. I understand being places where I feel like, man, this is too beyond me. Can I hang. God said, this door I'm opening up for you is uniquely designed for your gifts and talents and ability. Basically, they're going to want you. Basically, they're going to realize you're the best thing since sliced bread. Basically, they're going to say, you are our hope. You are the one we've been waiting for, which is why it seems like it's taking a long time. Because God says, your season of frustration is over. He said, your season of aggravation is over. Your season of feeling like you just don't cut it, or you're just not good enough, or you're not wanted and you're not you're not the one he said that is always I'm I'm creating something for you I'm preparing something for you I'm moving the distractions out of your way when before you heard a buzz when before something was happening now it seemed like there's nothing happening God said I don't want you to go for the wrong opportunity I don't want you to go for the wrong person I don't want you to go for the wrong thing so now I this is silence it's almost a holding pattern but God says this season if you hold your stance if you get yourself to Together, if you strengthen yourself, if you stand erect, if you cease firing, stop fighting with people who are on your team and hit the demon and deal with the spirit and bind the devil and loose what God's have for you and hold yourself together and have your cry and pick yourself back up and wipe your tears and talk to yourself in the mirror and fix your hair and put your makeup on and clean your face and get yourself together and keep on walking and after you fall, pick yourself back up and put one foot in the front of the other and you keep on walking because you know God before you who could be against you that the greater one is on the inside of you if God before me who can be against me the Lord God is my helper whom shall I be afraid God said if you get yourself together this season you'll be able to see what I'm bringing into your life you're going to be able to rejoice what I'm getting ready to do in your life I'm saving the best for last in this season you may be the last one getting your breakthrough the last one getting your raise the last one one getting your house, the last one getting your job, the last one of your crew getting this. God said, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about your age. Don't worry about how long it's taken. Don't worry about what things look like. I 
am preparing something just uniquely right for you. That when you step in it, you say, man, where had this been all my life? This fits me. This looks like me. This is me. I feel wanted here. I feel accepted here. God's reversing the years of your rejection, the years of your abandonment, the years of your abuse. If you just hold your stand, get yourself together, God's going to place you in something uniquely crafted and designed just for you. And you're going to say, it is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in my eyes. You got to survive this process. That's what I said. I'm going through the door. Out my counter. I'm going through the door. So the thing is, I spent some seasons like, nah, that's all right. So I'm from North. That's all right. That's all right. I got jumped many days back in the day. I know a fight when I see one. I know when it looks like I'm outnumbered. But God said, no, I'll go through the door more with you than it is with them. So it's, it's just right. Spending some time here because I need somebody to get out of that dead men walking mentality. You're here, but you're, you're just dead. You're walking, but you're dead men walking. You don't feel anything like you used to feel. You don't see anything. You don't laugh like you used to laugh because Satan has knocked the joy out of you, knocked the peace out of you. And so you, you're alive, but you zombied. I speak to you. I call you out of the stupor. I call you out of that zombie walk, and I say you shall live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord. That what God has given you, it shall live. That the vision will speak. That you have focused, because it's uniquely crafted and gifted. See, the thing is, when you hit disappointment and frustration, when the right one shows up, you're going to know it. Because what God wants you to do, he said, when you step into this place, I, I want you in this season to appreciate it. I want you in this season to realize it was the Lord's doing. That when you realize that I did nothing for this door, that this is surely favor. And so God said, this is a wide open door. This is a great door. It's an opportunity just for you. And I mentioned that Satan is hoping that you give up, stop having expectation, that your process that has been designed to cut you and define you and, and skill you for this open door, not to discourage you and not to disappoint you. Guys, I'm working this thing for you. There may be times that your faith may be tested. In order for you to have what you believe God for, you have to stand firm in your faith. Dr. Marsha Bailey encourages you to not give up, but to continue to trust that your situation will change for the better. Order this CD-DVD combination today for your love gift of $15 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for Standing Fast in Faith. sees you when other folks are ignoring you, when nobody else is thinking about you, when folks are disregarding you, when people think you don't qualify, when they won't let you in their clique, let you in their club, God sees you and regards your low estate and said, no, you just the one that I can make an example of. You, you just the one that I can show myself strong. You, you just the one who won't give me glory and realize nobody brought you from down there to up here but me. They won't be able to look down on your family 
family no more because you gonna put the name on the map and they gonna have to put some respect on your name. Get ready to enter the next level of glory that God has purposed for you at the 2016 Direction for Life Conference, November 9th through 11th with conference hosts, Dr. Herbert Bailey, Dr. Marsha Bailey, guest speakers, Bishop Marvin Sapp, Dr. Mike Freeman, and Bishop Henry Fernandez. We'll have musical guests, Moret Brown Clark, Jason Nelson and Brian Courtney Wilson. For more information, call 877 798 5433. It will be a night to celebrate Drs. Herbert and Marsha Bailey. We invite you to join us on Sunday, September 25th at 6 p.m. for our Founders Day service with guest speaker, Pastor Otis Lockett Jr. of Evangel Fellowship Church of God in Christ, Greensboro, North Carolina. Be our guest as we honor our man and woman of God, Drs. Herbert and Marsha Bailey, on Sunday, September 25th at 6 p.m. at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia for our Founders Day service next week on Direction for Life. Wherever room God has called you to, I need you back in there because God has called us to take some things over. God has given us a lot to take. He gave us some land to take and I need you to be right back in a place of fighting so that you take everything that God has ordained for you to take. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praise report at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one-time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll free at 877-798-5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.